Okay, we are live. Hello, everyone out there. Uh, welcome to New Ambassadors Theater Lab 55. Uh, my name is David Adam Gill, I'm the artistic director, but I'm not important this evening because uh, we have Mali, uh, Marley. I can start. <laughs> uh, Miley Binion, uh, who is uh, going to host uh, the lab this evening. Uh, welcome. I know that, that you guys are used to Fridays, as am I, and that's probably why my brain isn't working. But uh, welcome, Miley. Uh, give, say hi, give a little bit about yourself, and then let's, uh, let's get into this. All right. So for those of you who don't know me, uh, you may have seen me around. My name is Miley. I am a company member. I'm also on the executive board of the theater company. Um, and I will be your host this evening. If you haven't been to our labs at all, we're a 501c3 based in Manhattan, although we have wonderful actors from all over the country right now. It's why we're still loving Zoom. Um, this is our lab series. It's all about play development and plays that are in process. So we read them and then we uh, have feedback and discuss, which is so, so beneficial for the playwrights. Um, we encourage everyone who's either on YouTube or on Zoom to use the chat the whole time. We love seeing live reactions to works um, to kind of mimic what you'd get if there was an audience really there. Um, but for those of you who are a little shy or on YouTube, we send out a feedback form that has all the same questions we ask during the lab and you can use that um, for each of our playwrights. Uh, I'll go into more about the theater company and other events we have coming up soon at the end of the lab, so stay tuned. But right now, I'd like to announce we have three awesome playwrights tonight. We have John Austin Wiggins, Aaron Mohan, and Evan Edwards, um, filled with some incredible actors you'll get to see. But I want to shout out two because they're new to new ambassadors, Emma and Claire. Say hello and welcome. Yeah, Rock yes. and Emma and Claire. Congratulations. We love when new people come and play with us. Congratulations. It's always <laughs> yes, man, it is always as exciting. Congratulations. Yes, it's as exciting as Ben uh, as Ben's reaction. That was appropriate. We love uh, inviting new people and welcoming them. Um, so just quickly before we get started, I'll give you a little bit about our feedback. We typically start with popcorn moments, which are just phrases, things that really grabbed you and um, you couldn't stop thinking about. And then we'll go into questions, moments that maybe gave you pause, things that were a little confusing that you maybe wanted further clarified and then things you wanna see develop further. Um, we'll also ask each of the playwrights, uh, we'll give them an opportunity to ask if they're looking for something specific in this read through and we'll focus on that um, as well. Um, I'll go into more about the company throughout the night and how you can donate to us and follow. But for now I say, well, let's get started. We are doing John Austin Wiggins piece first which is called Disclosures and I will pass it on to John to introduce his lovely cast. Hi, thank you, Miley. I appreciate it. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, we're doing a scene tonight from my play Disclosures, which I've been developing in uh, David Adam Gill's uh, playwriting class. Um, I'm very excited for this scene. Just a couple of things uh, for you to know up front. We have three characters. Uh, one, uh, Santino, is being played by Luis Alberto uh, Quintero. Uh, then we have the man who uh, doubles as Roberto, being played by Nicolas Di Piero, and Rosita, played by Cat Plazas. Stage directions are being read by Jennifer Bradley. She is also uh, playing the uh, text notifications. <laughs> so, um, uh, what, what you should know up front is that uh, San, Santino is Rosita's nephew, and they have recently reconnected after uh, 16 years being apart, and they are still kind of getting to know each other again. And uh, the man, this is the first uh, Rosita knows the man, uh, but uh, this is the first time that Santino and the man have met in person. Um, it, it, what I would like to know if, uh, if you would, any of you would care to share after the reading is if you feel that the characters are fully formed and if you understood 
uh, just what was going on during the scene. There's a lot of quick stuff going happening. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to these marvelous people and I'll see you on the other side. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, actors. Disclosures by John Austin Wiggins. Outside Rosita's house in College Point, Queens. Evening. Santino Soledad solely enters from the opposite direction, engrossed in a text conversation. The man sits outside on Rosita's step. Uh, pardon me. Disclosures by John Austin Wiggins. The man sits on the steps outside Rosita's house, waiting for her to arrive. He is gingerly texting with someone and enjoying the conversation. I like that. Bing. <laughs> mm, that too. Bing. Never tried that. Santino Soledad slowly enters from the opposite side of the stage, also engrossed in a text conversation. He stops walking after a couple of steps he doesn't hear the pings from the man's phone. Santino's phone is on vibrate. You're a virgin. Ping. Like Mother Mary. <laughs> Hard to believe, Luis. Santino types a long text. Ping. Please, not now. Santino responds. Ping. Which is it, huh? Please or not now. Bing! Santino sends a longer text. Bing! Ugh. Please stop. Please stop what? Bing! Ugh. Please stop, Tony. Who? Uh, sorry, Antonio. Who? Bad boy. Bing. Father, please, father. That's better. Bing. I'm sorry, father. Hmm. You'll be punished. Bing. Mother Mary. Whatever pleases father. This pleases me. Santino sends a text. Another, then another, and another. Bing! Oh. Bing! Oh. Bing! The pings continue. The man is no longer able to control himself. His breathing deepens further. He leans back and rests his head on the steps, holding the phone up so he can read the stream of texts. He reaches down grabs his crotch through his jeans, and squeezes. Oh. Oh. He hears the moan, looks around, and sees the figure of someone on Rosita's steps. Hey, you! The man oh, immediately God. starts to compose himself. What the fuck, man? Sorry, sorry. Are you hurt? No, no. Were you masturbating? No. What? I wasn't, uh, sir. What did you say? Ne never mind. What are you doing here? I'm meeting someone. At this house? Is that illegal? Who? A friend. Man or woman? Does it matter? Answer the question. Okay, a woman. Her name? Rosie. Jesus fucking Christ. Rosie Alvarez? Yeah, you know her? You might say that. What's your name? Hey, you first. Luis. Luis. What a coincidence. And you're... Santino? The nephew. 
How'd you know that? Are you stalking her? What? No. Fucking her? You're crazy, man. If you're fucking her. Get, hey, hey, hey. I'm gay. We're just friends. She never mentioned to Louise. She talks about you a lot. What did she tell you? Nothing. A lot of nothing? Yeah. Interesting. Santino <laughs> stares at the man for a long moment. How did you meet? I was walking by one day. And? She was sitting here, very upset. Upset? Crying. So you stopped? Wouldn't you? For a stranger? No. That's cold. It's not my business. Well, it's mine. You mean you made it your business? She was quite distraught. Which what? Made her an easy hustle? No, no. What's your problem? So you talked to her? I listened. Nothing more. What did she talk about? That's confidential. You won't say? I, I can't say. Why not? I made a, a... Wait, let me guess. A vow. Yes. Now I believe you. Rosie likes vows. Yeah, so do I. You're Catholic. How did you know? Birds of a feather vow together. <laughs> yes. Infidelity. Yeah, so Rosie told you about me? Well, like I said, she never mentioned uh, Luis. Right. She's only mentioned a Roberto. Know him? Who? Father Roberto? At Saint Fideli? Oh, yes, of course. Rosie likes him. I, I know. Do you? Do, do I what? Like the father? He's all right. Do you fantasize about him? No. Rosie said he's hot. She did? Is he? I don't know. Maybe. I bet he's horny too, don't you think? Yeah, I suppose. He's gay, you know. Is he? What's a gay priest to do? I, I, I wouldn't know. Really? No idea? No. Excuse me a sec. Santino opens his phone and quickly sends two texts. Bing, bing. The man reads the text out loud. Hi, Luis. Busted. You're Tony. Professionally. And you're Father Roberto? <laughs> Professionally. Only Luis when... The collar's off, yep. And you get off. That's cute. Luis is my middle name. Rosie's expecting you? Yeah, for our weekly dinner. Every Tuesday? Yep. The plot thickens. What plot? I hope you're ready. For what? She also invited me to dinner tonight. She, she did say she wanted us to meet. But didn't tell, tell either of us it would be tonight. Why? An innocent oversight. No, she's up to something. Like what? A blind date, maybe? <laughs> no, she would. Would she? I mean, it's possible. We are her favorite gays. She knows many? I guess, two. That she's aware of. <laughs> but you're celibate, right? In the narrowest definition of the word. She knows that? She, she assumes the broader definition. To, to her, I'm untouched. Your whole life or only after your vows? My honor's intact. Oh, you're a good Catholic girl, protecting your virginity by performing all sexual acts except intercourse. That, that's me. I, I played around in seminary, but now only virtual contact. Do you really think Rosie is playing matchmaker? She's late to the game if she is. We already have a relationship. We do? A business relationship. Ah. Uh, She's unaware of the sexting? I've never shared details about my sexual proclivities with her. Could make for an interesting dinner conversation. <laughs> Not a good idea. Come on, you'll expand her world!
Yeah, or terrorize her. Expanding her world is your department. Mine's to open her heart. You've done well. She is much more open-hearted than she used to be. She truly does want what's best for you. I know, but you helped her understand that I'm the only one who can decide what that is. Yeah, she discovered that wisdom all on her own. Which might not have happened if not for the influence of a progressive priest. Perhaps not. So what's your next progression? My next progression? You've gone from no collar to openly gay to no contact sexual encounters. I, I know where you're going with this. All that remains is to lose your virginity with some nasty fucking... Whoa, Santino. Just saying, you got pretty excited at my texts earlier. Well, it doesn't take much. <clears throat> Ouch. No, I mean, <laughs> I liked it a lot, obviously, but I... But you, you came too fast. Actually, I didn't come. Mm, sounded like you did. Yeah, well, someone interrupted me. Ah, yes. I'll make it up to you. <laughs> How? Santino stepped closer to Roberto. I'll think of something. <laughs> like what? Santino starts to run his hand down Roberto's chest. Something. Santino moves in as if to kiss Roberto, but then his phone pings. Ping! But I can't say. Santino pushes Roberto away and starts to walk what? away. Why, why not? Last minute appointment. But Rosie's expecting you. I'll text her. She'll understand. Roberto continues walking off. Will you call me? You have my number. Ro Roberto watches as Santino exits. Yoo-hoo, Roberto. Hi, Rosie. Sorry to keep you waiting. No, no worries. I, I just got here. Was that Santino you were talking to? Uh, yeah, he, he couldn't stay. Oh, no. Did he say why? Yeah, something about a last minute... Uh, appointment. Appointment, yeah. He said he would text you. Rosita's, Rosita's phone rings. Pings. Ping! Oh, I hate when he does this. I'm sorry. I really wanted you two to meet. It, it, it's okay, Rosie. We did have a couple of minutes to talk. He, he seems like a nice guy. Yeah, but it was very rude of him to leave like that. Well, at least we got to meet. We'll get better acquainted, uh, you know, next time. If there is a next time. I'm sorry. You're right, Roberto. You always look at the bright side. Rosie, did you tell Santino I was coming? No, I, I wanted to surprise him. He certainly was surprised. He should have seen his face. I mean, I wish I had. <laughs> Come, let's go inside. I hope you brought a big appetite. I bought a lot of food. I'm famished. Here, let me let me, let me take that. Oh, such an angel you are, Roberto. <laughs> I don't know about that. I do. Santino's going to miss a wonderful evening getting to know you. Don't worry. I'll see he makes up for it. They make their way into the house. Fade to black. Thank you, guys. Wonderful reading. Thank you so, so much. Oh, thank you, John, for that wonderful writing. Thank you, actors. You guys, I put it in the chat, but for everyone who doesn't have access to our chat, y'all were working Zoom. It was great job. Um, so John said two things he was looking out for. We'll start with those. Um, did you understand everything and were the characters fully formed? Does anyone want to jump on that? Elise is nodding. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought that, I thought everything was pretty clear. Um, I think that the plot points of like what you're setting up seem to be very clear. Like I'm looking forward to the the interaction of all three of them meeting. I'm looking forward to, there's like foreshadowing of another conversation between Santino and Roberto. That's a little bit more like this kind of blackmailing of I have information about you and I've got the stakes of revealing that information to a third party, you know? 
So I, I feel that is successful, you know, um, I'm still like, why, why is it so important? Why is this information so dire, you know, that it changes Rosie's opinion, you know, seems to be more paramount than, uh, like the parish's opinion, you know what I mean? Of the father. Um, so those are, that's something that seems very clear to me that sticks out to me. Um, and I love, and I'm what I, what I really think is really delicious is the, the battle for, um, the battle of figuring it out and defending, you know, one's actions, you know, like, what are you doing? Like, well, well, what what right have you to ask what I'm doing? Well, I live here. Well, it's like, well, okay, I guess, I guess I'll do the moral thing. And I love that kind of mixed in with the, the lines of like, oh, I'm not really an angel, you know, that kind of biblical symbolism that is kind of that um, dramatic irony, literarily speaking. Um, I think it's great. I completely agree. And yes, Nick. Yeah. Nick. So, um, I mean, in terms of like the, the structure, what, what I'm seeing is I'm seeing sort of four parts. It's kind of, you know, um, you know, Roberto is kind of texting. He meets, uh, you know, he meets, you know, Santino. He's not really sure, you know, you know, they're, they have that moment. Then it's, you know, Santino is the nephew. And then he realizes, oh no, Santino is the person he's been texting, I think. Right. So there's sort of three, three beats. And then the final beat is with, 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 with Rosita. So it's kind of like four, this scene comes in sort of four sections. Um, that it, that's that's sort of what I scanned from from working on the scene. So I hope that's the point. Um, and then uh, the only other thing is that you know the char- I think the characters feel fairly real and and consistent. It is scene nine, so you you sort of assume you know these so, these characters to some degree by now. But um, but within the scene, they they seem you know consistent and 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 real. Great. Yes, thank, thank you. you. And I completely agree. That's exactly what I was going to say is I thought you did nice touches too, because I've seen scenes from earlier in this play and I forgot about um, Santino's professional life. And I forgot a few things, but the way it's written and the way you kind of bring those reminders back in and still make it relevant to this scene, I thought was really well done. Um, okay, let's move on to popcorn moments. And I'm going to steal the first one, um, which was the birds of a feather, uh, the birds of a feather line. What was it? Birds of a feather. Um, Bow to the get. Bow together. I thought it was so cute. Um, and then I also loved the, the audience having a feeling that these two people were texting and then that tension resolving when they finally reveal it together, uh, which again, Nick, Nicholas kind of uh, touched on, but I really enjoyed that. Does anyone else have any popcorn moments? Um, anyone who's off camera, you're welcome to be on camera right now if you're on Zoom. And if you don't feel comfortable with it, you can also put it in the chat and I'll read it out. Or you can use our feedback form, which Ben will drop. Um, I just know we have some people new and I didn't want you to be hidden because you thought you were supposed to be. <laughs> uh, yes, so Aaron, popcorn moment. I mean, yeah, it was very similar to what you said on um, the moment when he, the um, Santino was like, uses the text sneakily to reveal the true identity of man. Um, I really loved that. And I loved um, seeing Rosie, seeing Rosita um, come out because these two men, I have, I'm sure I have seen other scenes, but I had no memory of it. So it was like coming in fresh. And I, and I felt like I was like, oh, I want to see her. I want to see her. Oh, she's here. Um, so even with a character who was only on screen for a little bit, I still was like, oh, I like you and I know you a little bit. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. I, yeah, I agree. I felt like she was very, I felt and Kat did such a great job, but I could see the like nosy relative as soon as she poked her head out, you know, how both of the men were like, no, this doesn't feel like a coincidence. This feels like it was specific. And then seeing her immediately poke her head out was just perfect. Yeah. Um, any other popcorn moments? <laughs> um, yes, I love the moment um, at the end of the interaction, when the priest says, text me, and then um, Santino says, well, you know, you have my number. And I love that it's really about getting the priest to like, 
continue to commit to like who he actually is instead of blaming it on that, you know, like, oh, like, you know, the serpent baiting with the apple. It's like, no, you want to eat the apple. So just eat the apple, you know, mm-hmm. it's okay. And watch out for snakes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, that's great. Okay. So we already kind of covered questions, development, characters, things you'd like to see developed further. Now, any and all of that good stuff. Anyone? Um, I think, I think there's an opportunity for just, um, a bit more of like, um, like a verbal chess match between the two when they're like kind of revealing information about each other or, and, or defending their position about why they would or would not have information that could answer such questions, you know? So like, it's like, well, what are you here for? It's like, well, what does it matter to you? You know, like, well, I, how do you know I don't live here? I'm moving in. Are you really moving in? You know, like having that kind of whole thing and kind of then showing their cards a little bit more with like, well, I know this bit of personal information. And then, you know, that doesn't totally rattle them, but it makes them kind of worry. And then I think there might be something fun there. Something to see there. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to piggyback. Uh, I think we all kind of touched on this, but I want to see the messy family dinner with all three of them. <laughs> I, I, I'm not selling you, it sh- I'm not saying what should or should be in there, but I would love to see that develop and see it actually happen um, personally. Okay. Anyone else? Oh, and Emma seconded. She said, yes, messy family dinner. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, Jen. I, I really enjoyed um, the what cat and mouse you had going in this in terms of, I felt like out of the two of them, Santino was like always a step ahead. So it was almost like he was leading into this final revelation of the two being who they are, but it's like, always sort of instinctually knowing where he was directing the conversation to go with, with the things like, um, what'd you say, fa, fa, you know, when he catch up on the father and then, um, oh, well, you know, I stopped by and I saw Rosie and, and I made a, oh, let me guess, a vow and how it all sort of comes together that he's Catholic and there's St. Fidelis and, and, you know, I just, I really liked, I, I felt like you had some really specific choices in terms of the conversation through the revealing. And I thought that that was very, uh, I don't want to say astute, but it was very nice. It was very nice to see oh, that thanks, and, and still see the difference in characterization. Thanks. To be fair, um, in, bo- in both of those, uh, um, uh, moments that you brought up actually are are occur earlier in the play. So Rosie tells Santino about how they met, how how she and Roberto met. So he knows the story, and he's kind of going along with it. And oh. yeah, yeah. So he's kind of playing. Yeah, <laughs> that's very fun. Yeah, Thank he you. he actually knows what's going on, and. Um, <laughs> And um, and to the other point too, I'm I'm sorry, I blanked out. What was it the second thing that you mentioned, Jennifer? The vow. The oh, the vow, vow, vow. vow. right? And and uh, and uh, Santino and Rosita have a a little bit of an argument about vows because Rosita and Rosita talks about vows being very very important to her earlier on. So. Um, Hence yeah. the comment, Rosie likes vows. Rosie likes vows, yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh. well. So. I, I'm, okay, I'm, thank you for mentioning those. Yeah. Is there a is there a scene? Is there gonna be like a like an epic Santino Roberto like breakup scene, for lack of a better phrase? But like, you know, something where they're just like there is another scene between them. I don't want to reveal it now. Um, okay. No spoilers. No spoilers. No spoilers. We'll no spoilers. But um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Right. Well, we're pretty close on time. If no one has any last quick comments. 
I appreciate your comments so, so much. You've given me a lot to think about. Oh, great, John. And there are some more in the chat. You should look at them. Um, yeah, I will. I will. <laughs> Someone said, I want to see them get together and you're already talking about it. <laughs> it's already breaking off. So if you were wondering <laughs> if people were invested in your characters, the answer is yes. Thank you. Um, thank you. Well, thank you, John. Thank you to all of the actors. Um, thank you to thank everyone. Thank you very much for everyone on YouTube and everyone who is sitting thinking on this later and wants to add some more comments. Ben and Mally are going to drop the feedback form in the chat. Please, please, please use it. We love it. The playwrights get it after the lab. Um, and thank you. Next up, Erin will be hanging on because she is next up. And it's my fiance's best friend at my hour wedding. Erin, yes. please introduce your wonderful cast. Excellent. And I'm going to give a slight bit of backstory because we are starting on page 35. Mm, um, thank you. So, this is the wedding between Emily, played by the amazing Claire, and Jonathan, um, played by Luis, who will be changing his name. Uh, <laughs> for he is no longer Santino, he is transformed. Um, it is their wedding. Um, Emily is 20 and has is giving up college, giving up everything to follow Jonathan around on his really terrible job. Um, she, uh, they are in a storage back kind of room in a ballroom situation at a hotel because this is the night before dinner um her cousin emily's cousin trixie is trying to convince her to not marry jonathan um but jonathan's best friend sam has come and emily is convinced sam is trying to steal jonathan away sam has brought her friend pierre um there and he is about to bust in as well um trixie is played by cat whom you just saw and pierre is played by frankie and jen bradley continues on stage directions it's yes oh beautiful faces you are in for a treat with these glorious humans i'm gonna go away let them take it away i have um no questions um because the popcorn and character development all that so i'm just interested in what you guys think um oh and there is a device um where you hear the sound of a VHS tape recording and the scene resets. And that has happened several times already in the play. So break legs, beautiful human. My fiance's best friend at my, our wedding by Aaron Mohan. Sam, something you wanna share with the class? I'm good. You love this walking haircut, really? Yes, he's my best friend. My mom is my best friend and I'm declaring my passionate love for her. This is different. And why now? Because he's about to get married. And if I don't declare my love now, when? Uh-huh. It's... Pixie gets up in Sam's face. Why? Because I miss him. Call or text. Why ruin the wedding? I need him. Need or love? Can it be both? Is it? I just... And why bring... What's his name? Pierre? That guy. Why? To make Jonathan jealous. Worked. Not helping. And if the sex was so bad... It wasn't that bad. So bad. What? So he's in love with someone else. He's trash in bed. You barely talk. Why now? Trixie keeps approaching Sam, getting more in her face until the final... Why? I... Why? Because I... Uh, why? I... Why? Sam grabs Trixie and kisses her passionately. Sam releases Trixie, who stumbles backwards. Trixie is at a loss for words. That... What? Okay, that's hot. Oh, shut up! Emily puts the gag back in Jonathan's mouth. Okay. Yeah. So that happened. The sound of a tape rewinding. The four actors do their actions in reverse, but not actually saying their lines in reverse. This involves Jonathan spitting the gag out. Trixie and Sam are standing nose to nose. Why? Pierre is a terrible beard. Excuse me? You heard me. Sam grabs Trixie and kisses her passionately. Sam releases Trixie, who stumbles backwards. Trixie is at a loss for words. That... What? Okay, that's hot. Oh, shut up! Emily puts the gag back in Jonathan's mouth. Trixie goes up and kisses Sam. 
Wow. <laughs> the sound of a taper winding. The four actors do their actions in reverse, but not actually saying their lines in reverse. This involves Jonathan spitting the gag out. Trixie and Sam are standing nose to nose. Why? Sam grabs Trixie and kisses her passionately. Sam releases Trixie, who stumbles backwards. Trixie is at a loss for words. Bat. What? <laughs> okay, that's hot. Oh, shut up. Emily puts the gag back in Jonathan's mouth. Trixie goes up and kisses Sam. Wow. <laughs> yeah. One more? Sam grabs Trixie and kisses her again. As she does, Pierre bursts in. He is all things fabulous, charming, well-dressed, well-mannered, and a fierce friend. He is also really a terrible beard. Okay, so someone really needs to go deal with Uncle Bobby. I mean, I'm all for freedom of expression, but his parents really need to... What do we have here? Sam and Trixie break apart. Here, what? Because finally, girl, I've been waiting so long. And may I just say, excellent choice. <laughs> Thanks. Of course. I've been saying to Sam this whole time. You just arrived a few hours ago. As I've been saying to Sam this whole time, you are the only interesting person here. Hey. Oh, darling, you are not a fully formed person yet, which is why you're marrying this. It, it's, it's just, I mean, I mean, you're, you're way better than this. Mm. Oh, darling, don't take it the wrong way. You're gorgeous, but, you know, there's, you're just kind of something for fun. And we'd have fun. Pierre. What? I, just because you think he's a terrible lady doesn't mean I can't improve on the situation. Mm. Jonathan attempts to flee the situation, but being tied to the chair, he is very, very unsuccessful. Mm -hmm. he falls over with a large thud. The sound of a taper winding. The five actors do their actions in reverse, but not actually saying their lines in reverse. This involves Jonathan somehow being righted in his chair. Good luck, Jonathan, with that one. As I've been saying to Sam this whole time, you are the coolest, most interesting person here. I mean, well, second after moi. <laughs> hey! Oh, darling, you are not a fully formed person yet, which is why you're marrying this. It's, I, it's just, I mean, you're so much better than this. Mm. Oh, darling, do not take it the wrong way. I mean, you're gorgeous, but you're also something that is just... Wait, what do we call it, Sam? You're really not... Oh, yes! What? Fuck him and forget him. You're definitely a fuck him and forget him. Mm -hmm. Okay, I admit, that's a cursory glance. And Sam... Did say you were a truly terrible lay. Mm. You just take offense to everything, don't you? And you really shouldn't. She does not care for penises one bit. So <laughs> that is the strangest way to phrase that that I've ever heard. Oh, thank you. I pride myself on my originality. You're gonna take your amazingly original ass. Original and toned. So toned. Out of here while we sort this out. Oh, uh, darling. Do you really think this is gonna happen? A girl can dream. Okay, but back to the point. Pierre, you agreed that Emily should not marry the walking haircut. <laughs> walking haircut? I like that. It, that is, it just seems so apt. Hmm. Oh, hush. Well, we're definitely going to have to cancel the wedding. Hmm. Again, hush. So how would we... I mean, is there any way to get, like, deposits back or, like... Oh, it, it's bigger than that. Oh, honey, I saw the venue. Very few things are bigger than the budget of this wedding. She still wants to marry the moron. What? Yeah. Oh, honey, no. Emily, finally having had enough of this, stands up on a chair. It also happens to be the chair Jonathan is sitting in. Kudos to the hotel for buying such sturdy chairs. Uh, Can we all just stop talking about me like I'm not here for a moment? Shut up! I'm here, and this is my wedding you all are talking about. I'm getting married to this, this, this. Emily breaks down crying. <laughs> oh, come here. Come here. Trixie helps Emily down. Emily sits on top of Jonathan with a very large plop. He grunts in pain. Oh. She but, something. But, 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 but. What? I love him. Oh, hon, no. 
No, you don't. Mm. I don't think anyone does. Mm. Scratch that anyone other than himself and his mother. Mm. Nor does he love anyone else besides himself. Maybe his mother. Mm. And that's what I've been trying to tell you. No, I don't believe you. You just want him for yourself. What did you put in her drinks? Alcohol. That normally doesn't make one this delusional. She is 20. Sweet baby Jesus, you gave a fetus alcohol. No wonder. Stop talking about me like I'm not even here. I'm an adult and I'm engaged and I'm going to marry the narcissistic asshole if I... Emily tries to turn to Jonathan, but trips over her own feet and falls to the ground. Hard. She immediately starts screaming. Emily! Are you... What? Let me help you. No, we're just trying to help. We love you. (laughs) Shut up. This is why you're helping dead. Emily stands up to reveal blood coming out of her mouth and her two front teeth missing. It's not... That is so bad. I I can't even lie. You are the worst! Trixie shoves him over. Hard. He falls. Hard. Oh, that is a much better position. Here. Um, We can, we'll call an emergency dentist. And, uh... Not the time. uh, Emily sees her teeth on the ground. She runs out crying. (laughs) It's not the door that leads out, the door that leads to the storage closet. She still slams the door behind her. Emily, that's not, that's a storage closet. The sound of many, many chairs falling over. Oh, shit, Emily. Trixie runs after her. Well, fuck. I told you not to come. You told me not to come without you. And I was right. The sound of a taper winding. The five actors do their actions in reverse, but not actually saying their lines in reverse. This involves Jonathan somehow being righted in his chair again. I recommend doing the same thing as last time, unless you want to be adventurous, then Godspeed. And Emily and Trixie appearing from the storage room with Emily blood-free and teeth in their original condition. The floor would ideally be blood-free as well. But back to the point, Pierre, you agree that Emily should not marry the walking haircut. (laughs) Walking haircut? I like that. It seems so apt hush okay Mm. we're definitely gonna have to cancel this wedding Mm. again hush so how would we what do we like do we get a deposit back or oh it's bigger than that oh honey i saw the venue very few things are bigger than the budget of this wedding she still wants to marry the moron what yeah oh honey no Emily, finally having had enough of this, stands up on a chair. It also happens to be the chair Jonathan is sitting in. Kudos to the hotel for buying such sturdy chairs. And we all just stop talking about me like like I'm here for a moment. Uh... Shut up. I'm here. This is my wedding. You all talk about it. I'm married to this. 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 Emily (laughs) breaks down crying. Oh, come here. Come here. No, not you! Okay. What about me? What about me? Yes! Really? He's new! Oh my. Pierre helps Emily down. What's wrong? Everyone, it's all of this! (laughs) Breaks down more and grabs Trixie's purse. She pulls out another bottle of booze, probably whiskey. Definitely whiskey. She rips the top off, however she can get it off, and chugs. Pierre gingerly pulls it away from her as she speaks. Okay, darling. Oh, we've we've had enough of that. No, I'm sad. Want whiskey. Yes, yes, and and there will be a time for that. Come, sit. Pierre plops down on Jonathan. Hard. Jonathan groans. Oh, oh, maybe you wouldn't just be a fucking forget him. Come and sit with Pierre and tell him what's wrong. Pierre pats his lap. Emily comes over and sits. Pierre. 
Oh, hush. Now, tell me what's wrong. Other than everyone trying to ruin my happiness. Oh, honey, no. No. No, 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 no. What? No. No. I can see what happiness you get from him. What up? I thought talking about my penis. Never, love. Now, hush. Then why did she come? Why did you come? I... I'm curious as well. To stop the wedding. Wait, you don't... I mean, he really sucks. Even if you were straight. I couldn't let her do this for herself. To herself. So you... He was my best friend for years. I know what he's like. Years? Best friend? Okay, what? What are you like? In, are you in eighth grade? <laughs> I know him. And I read about you and you have so much. You're giving up so much to be with. Well, him. Mm. It, you're making her quit college to follow you around like, what? A puppy? You want to get a puppy? Get a puppy. Don't marry someone. I seriously doubt he could care for a puppy. Oh, he definitely couldn't. Am I wrong? There is a long pause. That's what I thought. Em, this is what I'm trying to tell you. You have so much. Even Sam and Pierre see it. Even? Slow your roll. You just met her. Slow your roll? Really? (laughs) Shut up. Ignoring that. So, honey, why do you love him so much? I love him. Yes, but why? It's just, I love him. But why? Him. The hair. You know I was joking when I said that. I know, but I'm serious. It's the hair. It's what got me. Let me, here, up. Get up, hon. Hair gently lifts Emily up. She sits on the floor. She finds the bottle and drinks. Pierre stands and looks Jonathan over. I don't know. Ah. Maybe. I need to. Wait, do you guys, do you all mind? What are you? Pierre goes over and unties Jonathan. Okay. Stand over there. Jonathan, you're muted, but I need you to stand over there. No! You're all crazy, Emily! Jonathan goes to Emily and kneels down to her. She keeps drinking and ignores him a little. Emily, baby, look at me. Look at me. We need to... You need to stop listening. Give me the bottle! Jonathan goes for the bottle. Emily scoots away from him. Because, come on, Jonathan, you're the reason she's drinking. No, no, no. Honey, look at me. Flips her up. She's still clinging to the bottle. Jonathan leans and flips his hair. It sounds not impressive, but it's actually really, really attractive. It doesn't make sense, but it just is. Oh. Oh. Uh. Oh my God, Emily, really? <laughs> no, I get it. I mean, I still wouldn't, but like, I get it. Um. Thank you. Could you do that again? But like looking at me. Um. I don't. I did untie you. Pierre, really? But not why we're here. Not why you're here. Emily, you're not really falling for this. I. Emily. Jonathan does the hair flip again, and again, it is shockingly attractive. And again, it doesn't make sense, but it just is. This makes you weak in the knees. I shouldn't have brought you. But thank you for doing it. Mm-hmm. I... Emily. Emily. Jonathan. I... Pause as Emily looks between everyone. Emily suddenly dashes from the room into the storage room. Um. I don't know. Pixie runs after her. Emily! Are you sure you won't? It's like a, a little flip. Like a Jonathan, little hair flip. Look. Pierre gives him a sweet smile. Jonathan shakes his head and runs after Trixie. 
Trixie blocks his way. Get away. Emily, Emily, are you? Are you the reason she's in there? You're the reason. Oh, really? You upset her. I think you ruining her life did that. I'm not ruining her life. So she doesn't have to quit college and abandon all her friends and her dreams? That's not what I- It's exactly what you're doing. You just want to control her. Oh, you did not. Where's the razor? Someone give me the razor. Trixie starts searching for the razor. She may or may not start tearing the place apart. She probably does. I'm leaving! Razor! What about Emily? You say you care about her. Is it because she's threatening? Where did I put it? No, no, I... Jonathan slowly goes back over to the storage closet. Emily, honey, can I... Jonathan cracks the door. As soon as he does, the sound of violent vomiting can be heard. <laughs> really, really gross. Jonathan closes the door. Oh. Emily, honey, are you... Are you... More vomiting sounds. <laughs> Aha! What? I found it. Pixie brandishes the newly found razor. It is, of course, on. No. Trixie lunges at Jonathan, the sound of a tape rewinding. The five actors do their actions in reverse, but not actually saying their lines in reverse. Pierre reties Jonathan into his chair. End of section. <laughs> Woo. Bravo, actors. Bravo, actors. Come back on and applaud our wonderful playwright and actors. <laughs> that was just so much fun. <laughs> That was so much fun to watch. I was busy in the chat getting flashbacks to my childhood. <laughs> um, yeah, as soon as all the hair flips start, it really sets you right back in the time period. I already knew it with the VH VHS tape, but all of the hair flipping, it just takes you right back. Also, uh, kudos to the gag slash um, clown nose, Jonathan Luis. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Luis, you're so creative on Zoom. It's just a joy to watch. Uh, side note. Okay, um, thank you. So Aaron didn't have any specific questions. So we're just gonna jump right into popcorn moments. And I know firsthand there were a ton of them. So does anyone wanna start us off? Emily has a, a fun line about, I, I can't remember the exact one, but it's like, I'm sad. I want whiskey or whiskey now or something like that. That's a great, I love that little line. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you. I agree. Um, yes, Jen. I really love the dialogue you have going over his hair. So again, to harpen onto this, but just Yes, it's it's like a flyback to all the aha videos and old George Michael and Flock of Seagulls and whatever, you know, that in excess flip or whatever. But the whole when Pierre's like, oh, oh, you know, no, I get it. You know, just the subtleties of the way that the characters react to that moment, I think colors the whole scene so well and it's i don't i don't even know how you could have done that with these characters but you did and they each have their own specific reaction to it whether it's, well, it's so stupid and what an idiot and you know oh no you know and the and the the cynic friend you know who's like oh no no i get it yeah i get it <laughs> i just think that that is such a great it's more than a moment. So I, I love that. It's just beautifully written. Well said. Uh, yes, we're going to do Claire and then Louise. And then Kat, sorry. Um, so, sorry. Um, I'm trying to, there's one particular line and I can't find that I'm going back over. Pierre has so many good moments and like even just reading it, reading it the way it was punctuated for the first time without even hearing it. Um, he, the way that he spoke was so clear. And I think just even like seeing it and hearing it tonight, like and Pierre is like such, he's so fun and he's so clear in the way that he's like really driving these scenes. He's, he's so perfect on every level. I love everything about him. 
Completely agree. Okay, Luis. Um, I think that my favorite popcorn moment was like the theatrical device of always going backwards. You know, I loved that device. I thought it was ingenious and I loved the repetition of it. And I love that it kept us as an audience guessing, like, what are these key moments? Like, when are the moments when we second back to, right? And it's like, I love that. And I love that each scene is a little bit different. So thematically, it speaks to me of like, oh, if I could have done it all over again, would I have done it differently? You might have, but, you know, things would have sinned. There's like so much juice and like meat there. I think it's awesome. I love that. And I love that it's in such a, like, uh, um, like intense like sexual moment you know what i mean so everything's like really heightened you know like that like sexual ecstasy of like slapping like a, a gag in someone's mouth and making out with somebody and then reliving that and coming from the denouement of all that and the complications i just think i mean i'd go see it you know i want to see that live which i think was a mark of really good theater because that would that would be something that you'd want to really see in the same room so it's great I agree about the device and it's both a popcorn moment and a bit of a question for me, but not a question I necessarily want answered, just a question where I'm like, is this a sliding door? Like, or what's that movie called? Is it sliding door? Okay. <laughs> and, you know, is this a sliding door scenario or is this just all the different options? Which one's the real one? I don't necessarily need answers to these questions, but I ask them the whole time and it's engaging. Um, and Kat, I did not forget about you. I'm sorry. I just steamrolled my own <laughs> self in there. That's all right. I just wanted to follow up on the, on the love for Pierre. Um, I especially appreciate it for me, the popcorn moment. And there was a few of them were when he made commentary on how young Emily is. And that might just be like, like he always did it in such a funny way. I spent my last semester in undergrad as a 21 year old who was the oldest in my apartment and yet the only one who wasn't engaged. So I get that humor. Like what you're getting married at 20, you're a fetus. Like, right. Like he goes from like a fetus. You're not a fully formed human. Like they were just priceless little zingers. And um, they were definitely something that made me laugh a lot. Completely agree. Yes. Um, we're going to move quickly on. Let me check time. We're going to move quickly on to development, and I'm going to take the first one. Um, we'll go development slash questions. So if you have anything you have questions about or anything you'd like to see develop further, raise your hands for either. Um, for me, this is just the thing I love, and I am interested to see more. I love how in this play and the different scenes I've seen, the verses, like the sides, keep flipping, right? So in the beginning, it was kind of Emily and Jonathan versus everyone else. And then at some point, Trixie was on the same side as Emily. And in this one, it seems like it's now everyone against Jonathan and Emily's in her own world. So it's it's very engaging and it's keeping me interested to see how many other ways before this wedding, if it happens, will the sides flip again. Um, anyone else? Questions? Development? I just want to see where it goes from here. <laughs> <laughs> yes uh agreed and you have quite a few comments about walking hair so definitely another popcorn moment um now i guess i've ooh, got a alternate reality vibes that's interesting that's a different i'm sorry louise <laughs> is, is this is the playing of the whole play like in a one shot like you just see the whole scene unfold or is it episodic is it broken up into different scenes that change time and place so um, right now it is one long shot. Sorry, you can see my husband when I put it. <laughs> I just saw him. <laughs> <laughs> Who does have very floppy hair um, for all those feeling the floppy hair vibes. Flip your hair. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the flip. <laughs> um, so I don't have a type. Um, but I, so right now I'm writing it as just one long scene. Um, without the the moments in between. So we'll see where it goes. We'll also see if Uncle Bobby, who's apparently taken his pants off in the other room, comes in. Um, so I don't know. I'm interested to see what happens next too. So I, my question is, how long has Jonathan been gagged? Like, is he gagged like when the audience sees him? And then, no, like, no, they all, all and Emily, we see, we start with the empty room and then Emily runs in followed by Trixie, then followed by Jonathan followed by yeah or a mix up emily then jonathan then trixie and there are some entrances and exits 
he is not bound and gagged the whole time. He's just mostly in this scene. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking about like, man, who, whichever actor is playing this role, it's actually really fun because I can't help but laugh when I'm, when you're like, <laughs> all you got to do is bite down on it. Anyways. <laughs> oh man. Um, thank you all. That was great feedback. Um, we're running out of time. So I'll just encourage you all again, everyone on YouTube and everyone on Zoom, please, please use the feedback form for anything else you want to say or anything you didn't feel comfortable saying, please. We love it. I know Aaron would love it. Um, use that feedback form. And I'm not sure if I mentioned this for everyone on our YouTube side, but sometimes you have trouble clicking all of the links we talk about in the chat. And so we also put them in the YouTube description up at the top. So if you're on YouTube, you can get your feedback form up there. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, playwrights, everyone. Thank you so much. We are gonna move on to our third and final piece of the night, which is our playwright, Evan Edwards. It's called The Revolution Begins with Uno, and he will introduce his cast. And Evan, if you're looking for something specific, please let us know. Actually, this is at this point a standalone piece. Um, and it's in its entirety. It's just like a little 10 minute jobby. So um, there's not anything specific I'd like to know um, that isn't already going to be covered in the general questions. Uh, the only thing that I have to say is one of my actors seems to be lost in the internet somewhere. So I'm going to be playing one of the roles. Uh, I figured if it's good enough for um, a writer, playwright on Broadway to get on a Broadway stage with a book in his hand so the show can go on, I can certainly do it here on YouTube. Well, I love that, but I just popped on for a second to say, if you prefer me re uh, read it so you can watch it, I can do that. Uh, but if you, no. it's your play. So if you, I'm obviously not, I'm not the right, <laughs> not the right type, not even remotely, not. but thank you for Maybe the offer. <laughs> well, thank you for stepping up and please continue introducing your guest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we have, first up, myself, I'll be playing David and we have Jason Nadal. He's playing Marcus. Hello, everyone. James Berkeley, he's playing Pasquale. Hello. And then Star Kirkland, he's playing Jenna. And like I said, you don't really need to know anything. Just sit back and enjoy. The Revolution Begins with Uno by Evan Edwards. West Town, Chicago. David's family room, clean, uncluttered, neutral tones of beige, upscale and nice, but boring. Now, because it needs to happen now. The stage is empty except for a folding card table and four chairs leaning against a wall. If adding other furnishings, they should look upscale and nice. The front door isn't locked because white people never seem to lock their doors. So why should David? Hey, David. Marcus, come on in. You should lock your door, man. This ain't the TV show Friends. Locks are only for honest people. Anyone who wants to get in here can and will. Why make it harder? You out your mind, but it's okay. I locked it. At any rate, you're a tad bit early. Figured you of all people wouldn't mind. Had a last minute client, so I came straight from the gym. He smells his armpits. Yo, I'ma hop in your shower real quick. How'd it go? Thank you for asking, it went well. The university board will make their decision before the fall semester. However, just between us, they told me I'm their top candidate. The doorbell rings. Good for you. I know Pasquale will be happy to hear that. Pasquale enters carrying a bottle of Prosecco. Oh, hey, babe. Happy to hear what? They kiss. Darling, you live here. You don't have to ring the bell before you come in. I don't know what you could be doing up in here. The door was locked. Marcus enters in a towel. Point in case. Hey, man, what's up? Go put some clothes while I pour the bubbly to celebrate. 
Oh, okay. It's on tonight. Woo! What are we celebrating? The engagement, silly. Pasquale, we've talked about this. We're not getting engaged until my tenure is officially announced. Oh, slow your roll. I'm talking about Marcus and Jenna. What? Really? Hey, buddy, why didn't you tell me? Marcus enters in black boxer briefs and a black button-down shirt. Tell you what? That you're getting married. Congratulations. David hugs Marcus. Marcus uh, excuse me? Away. Excuse me? That's why we're here tonight, right? I'm so excited. Jenna and I are going to do some serious damage to your credit cards. Please, we ain't getting married. Jenna ain't even moved in with me yet. Oh, I see. What do you see? Don't engage him. David begins setting up a folding table and four chairs. Exactly. Why should he engage me when you won't even engage me? Here we go again. I'm out. Honey, that's two different meanings of the word engage. Don't try to appease me. Don't you mean placate? Shut it, Marcus. You're just as guilty as he is. The two of you have some kind of single guys, he-man, woman haters club. Not true. Although you are gay. That doesn't mean we hate women. It just means we don't want to sleep with them. That's okay. More for me, am I right? <laughs> Marcus holds his hand out to David for a fist bump. Pasquale stares at him. Are well, you just gonna leave me hanging? Jenna scares me. David exits to get snacks, potato chips, pork rinds, hot sauce, etc. He comes and goes, setting things up. Why do we have to wait for some stupid board to decide if you get to be a real professor or not to get married? Hurtful. I am a real professor. We live together. We sleep together. We love each other. Why does announcing it to the world have to be put on hold until a group of old white men decide your fate? Yeah, David, why? You've gotten a horse in this race, Marcus, butt out. I'm not waiting for anyone to decide my fate. My fate is my own to make. These men are my superiors in charge of decisions concerning the school. And while they are all white, if, no, when I make tenure, I will change that from the inside. And have a butt ton of money to give you the princess wedding you deserve. David kisses Pasquale on the forehead. So you're gonna make tenure, work to change the system, all while planning a fairy tale wedding? No. Nope. I'm planning it just like I'm planning yours and Jenna's wedding. Hold up. We ain't getting married. He ain't even moved in with me yet. Yeah, I just told him that. Kind of. Marcus kisses Jenna, who hardly reacts. Jenna hands Marcus her purse, telling us exactly who is in charge. David, you really got to start locking your damn door. Not everyone lives in the hood and needs to lock their doors. That's the root. Not as rude as being late. Sorry, y'all. And don't act like you ain't never operated on CP time. It's in our DNA. Well, except for you, David. You always on WPT white people time. Am I right? Showing <laughs> <laughs> up place a half hour early as shit. No offense, my brother. <laughs> ignores Jenna's oh. and exits one final time to get whatever hasn't been brought out yet. Y'all ready to hit the club? Let's get it tonight. Yes. <laughs> I say, I say we pregame here, hit La Brea over on Kinsey before the cover kicks in. Then slide on over to Disco and West Hubbard for some dancing. Pasquale right. grabs Jenna's hand and twirls her. We're not clubbing tonight. Then why are you wearing your going out on the town tweed? Tenure review. Which I aced, thank you. It'll be announced this fall. God, we're finally getting married. Pasquale hugs David. Not until after the board, after the announces, board announces his tenure. tenure. It's still a reason to go out and celebrate. Chill, boo boo. Don't count your horses yet. He's a gay black man at an uppity all white university. Hmm. Sounds like a snowball chance at hell if you ask me. Nobody did, so mind your own business. All right, then. Get the crew on the line and let's get this party started right. Let's, Let's get, get this party, this party started, started quickly! quickly.
<laughs> I plan this get together and I say no crew, no party, no going out. Okay, then. Setting up for something else, you know, with the chairs and the snacks and y'all standing around waiting. For me. Oh, hell no. Jenna girl, I love your shoes. Thanks, they're new. No, no, uh-uh. Trying to catch me off guard. We ain't doing this again. Doing what? I just said I liked your shoes. Uh, that's how it started. First a compliment, then somebody says. Come on in, baby. Sit down. And then somebody else says, I don't understand what's happening. Which is soon followed by, Listen, this is a safe space, a haven. Fine. Y'all want an intervention? Let's intervene then, shall we? If you must know, I finished paying off my credit card debt two months ago. And yes, I paid for these shoes with plastic. David goes to interrupt. No, uh uh, no, no. Let me finish. Like I was saying, my financial counselor, which y'all set up the last time we intervened, advised me to start responsibly using my cards again. So I bought the shoes. Why is everybody still staring at me? Fine. I bought the purse as well. And the skirt. And the lingerie too. Damn, y'all happy now making me spill all my business? This isn't an intervention. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Y'all forget what I just said. <clears throat> yeah, we'll talk later. So if we ain't going to a club or intervening. And no one is proposing. Yet. Everyone is healthy. And financially stable. Then what are we doing here? We're playing Uno. They all stare at David in disbelief. You bugging. Right? Let's play some spades. Or hearts. Hell, even Crazy Eights is better than Uno. What do you have against Uno? Well, Uno is for 20-something white people. Of which we are neither. It's a game. Games don't have a color attached to them. Red light, green light. No said. <laughs> and Pasquale high-five each other. You know what I mean. I know I'd rather go through another intervention than sitting around playing some damn Uno. It's literally worse than doing nothing. Darling, that's not how you use the word literally. Man, I don't believe this. It's Friday and Uno is your big plan for the night? Black Americans have been programmed to live in perpetual trauma. That makes our lives exhausting. It's important we relax and recharge our minds and bodies and souls. If we don't look out for our own well-being, who will? I can look out for myself just fine at the club. Hey! Uh, we don't need to go to a club or, or a funeral or church or some other place white people believe we frequent. We can just simply come together and enjoy each other's company. But with Uno? Uno is straight up a white person's game. Why are Black people excluded from UNO? Do white people exclude themselves from hip hop or sushi or culturally appropriating anything at all? No. So Black Americans should be able to and open to everything as well, including innocuous 20 something white people card games. I do love playing card games though. Too. I brought some bubbles. So we could still get our drink on. I'm just saying, y'all could have chosen a different game. I feel like white people playing some damn Uno. Anything they get to do, we get to do. Like leaving their doors unlocked? Yes. And more so, anything they get to have, we get to have. And anything they get to be, we get to be. Like a tenured history professor at a historically all-white college. Exactly. It's time to stop perpetuating the stereotypic expectations thrust upon us. It's time to take up the cause and write our own narrative. The revolution begins with Uno. <laughs> yes, you are catching on, beautiful. He kisses Pasquale. Are y'all with me? Fine, I'll deal the cards. All but Jenna sit. Marcus starts shuffling. 
Jenna, you joining us? Viva la revolution. Girl, you know you like sticking it to the man. Bye, zoom me in. Flops into the chair like a petulant child. Can we at least play our music though? Somebody puts on some Pat Boone, Canada Carpenter shit. We're gonna have some stereotypic black on black crime up here because I'm gonna be beating the ass. They all arrange their cards and start playing Uno and eating. Pasquale pops open the Prosecco, then Karen Carpenter's Top of the World starts playing as the lights slowly fade on the quartet, laughing and enjoying themselves. Everything I want the world to be is now coming true, especially for me. And the reason is clear. It's because you are here. You're the nearest thing to heaven that I've seen. I'm on the top of the world looking at down creation. And the only explanation I can find is the love that I've found ever since you around your loves put me at the top of the world blackout thank you <laughs> oh my god thank thanks you all guys so much everyone come back one last time thank you evan thank you for stepping in and doing an amazing job acting as well <laughs> Thank you all. That was so great. I lost count of my popcorn moments and my computer kept telling me uh, that I was muted because I was laughing so loud. Uh, <laughs> you guys all did a fantastic job. It was great. You wouldn't believe it was you reading because everything was, the pace was wonderful. Um, okay, so let's jump right in with popcorn moments. Yes, Jen. <laughs> I love the whole theme of this scene. And I love that it has been centered around the game of Uno, which has been designated as the white people's game of choice. I think it is so clever and so unlike, uh, it's just a new fresh take on things I've seen before, but you're not pitching a television show. So that's not what I mean. But I love that such real issues are being brought in and, and almost made into little biteable moments through a game of Uno. You know, it, it, it's, it, it's these huge issues surrounding not only differences in race and differences in culture and differences in living standards and, and, you know, the horrible issues that we have growing on right now. And, and, you know, the, it, it's, it's overwhelming. And the fact that you have brought it down to focusing on this card game of Uno, I think is, is so brilliant and really brings the focus in to a point where it becomes I don't know, more, more, uh, it's easier to, to take in, I think. And, and I, I just think you've done it in a very, very clever, intelligent way. So kudos to you. I agree. And thank you, Jen, for that. Um, I want to give you a few specific ones and then I'll go to someone else. Um, the going out tweed, little bits like that that you put in were so quick and clever and just immediately helped you ground each character and make them really well full developed especially for a short play which is really hard to do um and i thought that was one of my favorites and then i'm looking back because i wrote a lot of these and the professor's going out tweed um <laughs> i lost the other one already i'll come back to it someone else <laughs> yes aaron I lost a lot of mine too, especially at the beginning. Cause I was like, Oh, this is so good. And then like 10 more really good ones would come and my brain couldn't hold them all in my head. So when I say it's delicious popcorn, I need it. Um, all of the actors, yourself included, Evan are like popcorn moments for me. Y'all are brilliant. Um, but Jenna's entrance star <laughs> and the, and the, and the call so many callbacks in a 10 minute play that just made me so happy. But the like, 
we ain't engaged. He hasn't even moved in with me yet. Like, <laughs> call back to what he, like that was just so good. And then her knowing what everyone's going to say at the intervention and like, bro, just, and, then, and then ending it with just forget everything I said. Um, it was just really lovely. <laughs> yes. And that reminded me, my other popcorn moment was, um, the the subverting of having me think the entire play was going to go into an intervention and then it quickly resolving almost immediately i thought was <laughs> wonderful um james did you have your hand up i, I did but i this is popcorn moments i'll wait till we do the comments at the end but i i have a couple things that i have to say about going through this before in a rehearsal because it was hilarious <laughs> speaking of star i said thank god we got to rehearse this because i would have laughed out loud during this reading if I hadn't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're amazing, <laughs> truly. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, yes, Nick. Nicholas yeah, or Nick? Uh, I keep- yeah. yeah, that's okay, Nick, yeah. Okay. Um, just really quick, yeah. Great comedic energy. Uh, the actors definitely brought it. Um, the only other uh, thing I would like to observe is that, um, you know, it's a, it's a four person play. Um, and as a writer, you know, my brain goes to it's you've, you've painted each corner, right? You've put each character, uh, each character is sort of unique enough where it creates this really nice stable square, if that makes any sense, right? You know, each character sort of occupies their own world and it really kind of, um, uh, balances the energy in the piece, uh, which I really liked. So that, that was one observation I had. Fabulous. Um, any, oh, we can, if, does anyone have any popcorn moments? Otherwise we will move on. I just wanted uh, to echo what Nicholas was saying in that. I thought that was really successful, the, how the, the writing of each individual character supported um, funny moments and serious moments and, you know, like satirical moments, you know, moments of like recognition, moments of truth, moments of like hilarity. So, and I love that it's unapologetically a short play. I love that. I love it. it's like it begins, it ends, this is all you need to see. I agree. Um, I had just a little popcorn moment, I guess. Mine yes, was just it, like, mine was more like inferred um, by the writing as to like how everybody's reacting to the song being played in the background. Because I like we hear it, if, if it was like a TV show, we would hear it, but we know that's what they're listening to as well in the background. And for me, it's just like all the guys laughing at Jenna when David puts this song on and she just like kind of just flips her shit, you know, because I told y'all motherfuckers not to play this shit, <laughs> <laughs> but y'all did it anyway. And we're just enjoying, we're just reveling in her, you know, disdain for that, that moment there, that, you know, that song and being played there after she said that. And that, that was for me, just something I came up with in my own head but I love that it was being sung. Kudos to Stage Direction for singing. Yes, kudos to Jen again. You to really Jen. committed and it gave them all mo some quiet moments at the end and it really worked. Um, okay, questions. Does anyone have anything that was confusing or you just had a question about something you uh, wanted clarification on? No? Um, okay, then let's go on to development. Now this is a standalone short play, so we can talk about it in two ways. I mean, personally, I do think this could be developed into other episodics. It feels very sitcom-y to me. Um, but at the same time, is there anything you want to develop particularly in the short play? Anything you'd like to see more of a character or anything like that? Yes, Aaron said, when can I see this cast live? Seconded. <laughs> yes, James. So I, I, I'm i gonna give you a little of my history. I am of mixed race, I'm half black, half white, and I'm married to a white man <laughs> who's from Oregon. So this play, I have lived this play. I When I go to my husband's families for, for holidays, we get the Uno and the Yahtzee and that. Then when I go to my black half, who are Southern Baptists in Virginia, it's loud, raucous, lots of food and everyone yelling at each other. So uh, every single one of these characters is in my family. So it's not even, it's not even like a caricature. It literally, I was like, oh my God, Star is being my aunt. 
<laughs> and you know, uh, and uh, you know, the character of David is kind of how I'm considered in my family because I I speak the way I speak. But um, so for development, if anyone's from a situation like me, this is my life. This I've had this conversation with people, not these exact words, but I've had the star, you know, the uh, the Jennas who were like, uh-uh, uh-uh, no, 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 no. And then, you know, then there's one guy who's like, wait, we can do everything white people can do too. And then, you know, and then there's that, there's that resistance, but then the, the, we shouldn't resist. And so I, for me, when I read through it, the person I was like, it's like Evan, because Evan and I have been friends for a very long time. It's like, he, he's put my mother, my dad, my aunts, everything in play, even though it's short, it is literally my life. So, <laughs> So I can relate to it very, very well. And I'm sure a lot of people can, even if it's not a black and white thing, even if it's just, you know, like if an Indian American family and then, you know, they meet somebody else's Jewish family, the whole different vibe of what we consider a good night out. And, you know, and when you get four people from different ways of thinking, this play, this conversation happens. So I just want to put that out there. No, that was lovely and well said. Um, okay, any final quick comments before we wrap up this wonderful evening? I feel very lucky to have hosted tonight because it's just been stellar all around. Um, final comments, thoughts? Yes, Kat. I, and then, oh, oh, yes, James and Kat. I just want to say one thing. I yelled at Evan when we did our rehearsal because he spoke the lyrics to Top of the World. I said, you have to sing it. So when <laughs> she sang it, I wanted to cheer out loud. She sang it and she sang it well. And I'm like, yep. that makes the ending yep. of this play perfect. So yep. <laughs> yes, chef's kiss and cat to take us home. <laughs> I was just going to say, I just want to see more of these four people. So Evan, it stands alone perfectly on its own. But if you want to make it an episodic, I would totally get behind this. <laughs> uh, yes. That is a perfect note to end it on. Thank you, Evan. Thank you to all of the wonderful actors tonight. Again, you guys have all been incredible. You're really raising the bar for Zoom theater, um, which is not easy to do. And speaking of Zoom theater, thank you to everyone who's still watching on YouTube. I know watching YouTube theater is wonderful and exciting, but it's also not the same thing. And sometimes staring at a computer screen for a long time is tough. So thank you for watching. Um, if anyone else has feedback for Evan, please leave uh, it on the feedback form. We'll put it in Zoom and in YouTube one last time. Um, yes, everyone give a round of applause to everyone else. And then I'm gonna take you guys out. I'm gonna let you know about a few things we're doing soon, but first I'm gonna give you guys my money spiel. So <laughs> we are a 501c3. That means we rely solely on generous donations from all of you wonderful people watching and in the community. So if you like what we did here and you wanna see more of us and you wanna see us in live and on Zoom and a bunch of different other ways, there are a ton of ways you can donate. You can donate on our website, on Facebook, Venmo. Um, you can follow our newsletter, which is when uh, we run fundraisers sometimes. There's a ton of ways to donate to us. We're gonna put them all in the links and really any little bit helps and we really appreciate it. Um, okay, now that I've begged you all for money, we can do the fun stuff. So. This Friday, we have a very exciting Friday night footlights. It is a reading of the mountain type, the mountaintop by Katori Hall. It's curated by Monica Ray. And I'm not actually sure who the cast is, but Star, are you in it? Do you know more than me? Do you want to say a little bit? <laughs> no? Okay. Well, Star, as you guys have seen here tonight, is incredible and they're in the cast. So that should be reason enough alone to tune in. It's this Friday at seven. The link is on our YouTube channel. If you want more details about it, uh, I'm sorry that I don't know them, um, but Monica Ray is curating a stars in it and it's going to be live this Friday. Check it out on Facebook. There's links to our YouTube channel where you can watch it. It's going to be a beautiful evening. I promise you won't regret it. Um, if you are interested in coming back to act in a lab, or if you have been checking us out and haven't signed up to act yet, but tonight, um, made you really want to, our next lab is, uh, February 9th, although it says Friday. So I just want to make sure it's Wednesday, February 9th. That is the Wednesday. So Wednesday, February 9th at 7 PM, our next lab is going to be hosted by Mark Hoffmeyer. 
And our playwrights are going to include our own Ben Dworkin, David Adam Gill, and Luis Alberto Quintero, who was acting tonight. So come back and watch us again next time. It's going to be great. We're going to put the link if you want to sign up to be an actor. Um, if you're not available for this lab or for the Friday Night Footlights this Friday, but you just want to know more about us in general, Ben's going to also put the link to our newsletter. We set out a newsletter every two weeks. Yes, Erin. Oh, um, Kat put in a great comment in the chat. Um, do we know if on February 9th, will it be in person or will it be online? We do not know yet. I know we were hoping it would be back in person, but I did not say because we are waiting to see how COVID safety plays out. We want to, everyone's health and safety is our first priority. And so, which is why we delayed in the first place. We do hope that our first Wednesdays will soon be in person, um, but we will update on the Actors Doodle and on our Facebook and on the newsletter that I'm talking about. We will let you guys know as soon as we know whether it will be live or on Zoom. The second uh, or the fourth Wednesday will always be on Zoom so we can pull our people in who are all around the country. Um, but yeah, sign up for our newsletter, follow everything we're doing. We keep it posted um, and updated so you guys know everything that's happening. Um, one last thing, we are going to be doing Heartbroke 2022, knocking on wood, provided nothing <laughs> happens. Um, Heartbreak 22 will be live, performed in New York in front of a live audience. Um, we are going through the play selection process now, so I don't have many details for you, but it will either be in late February or early March. And look out for our Facebook and newsletter for more information about it coming soon. Thank you, everyone. I'm done monologuing. <laughs> thank you for joining me tonight. It's been a blast. Please thank everyone again on the Zoom. They've been wonderful company. Um, yes. And give it up for Miley for being host and Mally for, for being on YouTube. Yes, and, and Mally and Ben for making my job much easier and handling all of the tech stuff. Thank you both. I couldn't do it without you. Um, and I hope to see you guys in February. I'm gonna well, wait.